As experts in the um, FX market, we focus on what to trade and when to trade. So when it comes to um, positions that we may decide to put up um, during the Asian trading session, um, for example, there's a lot of times at BK4 that's what we do is we trade news. And we know that when it comes to trading news, and if you're a trader who is awake during the Asian trading session or looking for opportunities during the Asian trading session, usually um, the pairs that you want to look at are the Australian dollar, the New Zealand dollar, and the Japanese yen. Because this is the time when Australian, New Zealand, and Chinese data um, are released. And that's, and you know, because these types of economic data are released during that time, those are the currencies that will move. During the European trading session, and these are in Eastern Standard Times, the currencies that will move um, in the early European hours are going to be the euro, the pound, the Swiss franc. You tend to see less movement in the Aussie, in the Kiwi. Um, and during those trading sessions, what we're typically doing is we're trading Eurozone or UK economic data, and we're looking for London market open kind of um, trading opportunities. During the US session, we're trading everything. We're looking for opportunities, and I apologize why this is 7 p.m., but I should say 7 a.m. to 12 p.m. We are trading everything from the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar yen to dollar CAD, and pretty much everything is fair game. We trade U.S. data, you know, any comments that we may have from central bankers. We trade, um, you know, U.S. stock market um, performance as well as the U.S. open. So we like to categorize, or like kind of isolate our trading in specific hours to specific currencies. And there's certain things that we um, like to look for. One of the things that we've kind of observed from our trading, um, especially during the Asian hours, is that the Australian dollar will oftentimes, not always, but you know, we've seen it happen often, reach new highs or new lows after a specific piece of economic data. So this is just an example of the Australian retail sales release where, you know, Australian retail sales um, came in much worse than expected. And so you see in this chart that the Aussie dollar basically collapsed um, right after the retail sales report. So it makes a new um, low basically after the retail sales report. And then what um, you will notice here is a lot of times after the Aussie data is released, um, there's consolidation and maybe even a little bit of a, of a retracement. And then when Europe opens, that's when the next leg lower in the Aussie dollar um, is made. And typically you'll see a new low made during Europe um, or in the early U.S. hours as a result. Because the point that I'm trying to get to you is that when it comes to trading Australian data, in my experience, from what I observed, is that the real opportunity to trade Australian data is to trade what I call proactively, which is get into the trade before the data is released um, and take a view on it. You know, we always have different biases on economic data that we present to our clients. Um, but the opportunity is really to trade it proactively, which is get in the trade before the data is released. Because typically what will happen with Australian data is that you'll have a knee-jerk shopper reaction. So let's say the data is bad. Aussie dollar will sell off aggressively. And once it sells off aggressively, you may have a little bit of additional continuation in the you know, 15 to 30 minutes, maybe maximum hour that follows. But then nothing will happen. It will consolidate, and you know, you're sitting there, let's say you're short after the data is released, you're sitting there with uh, you know, no movement, maybe even a little move against you as the Aussie dollar rebounds. And then, you know, Europe opens, sees the horrible Australian data or horrible Chinese data, for example, for example, then takes the Aussie dollar even lower. So in terms of trading opportunities, that means, A, you can either trade the data proactively if you're smart enough to figure out, you know, what the potential surprise is. You know, we help our clients do that. Or two, you um, maybe play the retrace um, after the data is released. Or three, which is probably, in my opinion, the smarter thing to do, is you put a trade shortly before the European Open, expecting that once the European market opens and they see this awful Australian data, or the flip side was a really good piece of Australian data, they, they see that number and they jump in and they pound the Aussie once again. So this is the type of stuff that we learn from experience. And we learn from trading, we learn from, you know, blood, sweat, and tears, and, you know, money lost, money gained, um, by watching these, you know, type of things. 
So <clears throat> another trading tip that we have is that the pound will oftentimes reverse the European move. And you know, once again, this hasn't happened all of the time, but you know, we've watched it happen um, a good number of times from our experience. So what um, this chart will show you is that um, the rally in the London Open um, to early New York reverses completely during the North American trading session. And, um, and this is just the kind of you know, volatility that you tend to see in the currency pair. Why does this happen? This happens because um, London is the most active trading session. And there's a lot of interesting behavior at the start of the London Open. So at the start of the London Open, there tends to be some interesting behavior um, that usually is related to nothing other than position adjustments because a lot of you know um, orders may be put on at the onset of late, at the London trading session. Traders may be reacting to some things that may be happening, may have happened overnight um, in other trading sessions. You know, tons and tons of things that happen, and because of that. Um, you will oftentimes see, you know, a lot of choppy price action at the London Open, similar to what you see in this chart here, where there's a lot of volatility. So basically, you see that the pound dollar rallies, touches this um, line atop at 162.65, fails to break new highs, then attempts to um, go to the day's low, then tries to rebound again, and then eventually collapses. This type of choppy price action is very indicative of what happens in the pound dollar. But when it breaks, it can break significantly because, um, because the initial adjustments in positioning is over.